Hey guys, today's video is going to be about how the linkages are set up on your older style one piece flow jet carburetors on the Briggs and Stratton engines. I had a couple of requests to do this video. I'm not, I can't remember exactly who it was, but I'll go through the comments and try to find them. But uh, I have a video on your newer style, your two piece carburetor, where it joins right here in the middle. I got a video for the linkages on it, and I'll put it up here at the top, and you can click on that and watch it. It's very, very similar. I mean, all your mechanics work the same pretty much. It just everything's in a slightly different spot. On a new style, your throttle plate is vertical instead of horizontal like this. And the same for your choke plate, which runs through here, back here. And some of your real old ones will have a lever right here. You can see it's getting the casting right here. And you'd manually choke, manually choke it here or have a cable hooked to it. But I'm going to show you a couple different uh, ways you can set these up. Okay, you're looking at it from the top now. This will be after this is removed. Probably if you're watching this video, you're putting it back together and you probably have the carburetor off anyway. But this is your throttle plate here. You can't really see it because of the way the carburetor is designed. That works just like the choke plate. You can see here how it closes it off. You see this little wire right here, it's loose. That's a spring. There's a very small hole right there and it's supposed to hook into it. This one's broke. About every one I see is broke. All it does is keep the linkage tight with each other. You'll follow your throttle down here to the governor arm. And you see another little hole here for the, the other end of the spring, which is broke right here. It's supposed to connect into that. You can see the governor arm here up to the top part of the spring right here. And it hooks down to this lever down here, which is what sets your throttle. That's how the tensioner works on the governor spring in the governor arm might be able to see it better through here kind of see how it hooks into the governor arm there on some of these you'll have different holes for the governor the governor spring on the governor arm you just have to pay attention to how it was some of them are different than the other ones and these carburetors have come factory with the chokomatic setup what that means is after you give it full throttle, you push your throttle lever up more and it chokes it. You can see the choke plate closing right there. And this is a very simple setup. You can see right there, the linkage connects into the arm on the carburetor. Runs down here. It's kind of, probably going to be kind of hard for you to see. It runs through a little bracket right here. And the end of it's kind of U-shaped, as you can see right there. And what that does, this little arm, little arm slings down here. There it comes right there. It catches that loop right there at full throttle. And you give it full throttle, it pulls it just that little bit. And that turns the choke on. As you see here. Now, another little difference on these motors. You see right here your throttle cable comes in vertically some of them will come in from the side at the bottom and all this is very very similar i mean it's basically the same thing it just looks different because it comes in at the side but everything works identical on it might be able to show you better on this one how everything's set up since it's all from not on the engine right now this is your throttle this sets your idle speed screw it in and turn it faster and back it out to slow it down it's your idle mixture adjustment screw and your main fuel adjustment screw on the back side that you couldn't really see on the other engine this is the your choke right here you see here they were just connecting that little hole at linkage I showed you the same for your throttle your throttle will connect into this you can actually see the throttle plate on this one If you ever need to work on the throttle plate or take the choke plate out, you got to pop this Welsh plug in the back. This plug right here comes off. And you can see they've been staked on two different places. There's a stake here and one right there. You put the new one in, you have to stake it about four or five places and put a little sealing on it or JB Weld or something like that. But you usually don't have to mess with them. That's the only time you'd have to if your throttle bushings are worn which they are a little bit in this one so you can see how I can move that or if your if screw came loose or something on one of the plates 
you wonder why this carburetor is painted red, I'll put it at the top here and you can click on it. The emulsion tube broke in this. Actually, JB Weld did as a test to see if uh, see how well JB Weld would hold up in gas. And I ain't used this carburetor a whole lot, but it's still holding, as you can see, because if it wasn't, the bowl wouldn't be on there. Because it's the part that this bolt the nut screws into. So that's another little project of mine I did a couple of about a year ago. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the carburetor off and hook all the linkages. Then I'll get right back to you. I'm putting it all back together. That way you can visually see how everything hooks up. It might be a little hard to see, but I'm going to try my best. Let me go ahead and get the carburetor loose. Okay, this is your governor linkage, your throttle linkage. You can see the spring that's broke on here. It's supposed to connect on both sides of it. About every one I've seen broke, and it's not real, real critical. It can cause an engine to lope a little bit, surge a little bit. But you probably can't see the governor arm. You just you just put it in here, get to the bin, make sure it hooks like that. And you go ahead and hook it up on the carburetor. This is your throttle. You just have to kind of play with it a little bit to turn it around there. And that's how you hook your throttle one up. You kind of just let it sit there for a minute until you can get this one set up. This is your choke, your automatic choke. This is the U shape I was talking about. You feed it in through this little bracket down here. Let me get a close up on that. You just feed it in that bracket right here. Just feeds in like that. You get this set up and hook it on here. It just goes straight in. Same as that one. Make sure nothing gets in the bind. Make sure it stays in there. Hook up your oil hose, oil breather hose here. I recommend putting this little bolt in at the bottom. It usually makes it easier to get everything else lined up. Just get it started. That'll help hold the carburetor for you. So you don't have to sit there and hold it. So after you get that bottom one hooked up down there, you're ready to go ahead and put the bolts in at the top. Get your first one here. And if you have this gasket, this one's torn. I don't have one for it right now. I'm going to be rebuilding this motor at some point. The uh, long part goes towards the carburetor, towards the back of the engine. Kind of acts like a heat shield in a way. Get that top one started. And then get the bottom one lined up. And then when you, before you tighten it, see how you can move it? This one you can't move it a whole lot. If you want to hold it up like this, and tighten these down. They don't have to go super tight, but uh, you want to get them pretty tight. Same for that bottom one on the bottom bracket. Get those pretty tight. Get this one tight. And make sure your oil hose is hooked up. You can hook it up right there if it ain't. No big deal. Make sure everything's working. That's another thing I'll talk about. Make sure that your governor's working. I've actually showed this in several other videos. But right now, see so your throttle will be set to idle. And there's basically no spring on this, just a little bit. And when you throttle up, you get quite a bit of spring tension on there. So very little, quite a bit, and then like that, then you push it down. You throttle up, choke closes. As you can see. That's basically it. Now, you also might want to adjust your governor. I'm not going to talk about it in this video. I'll put it in at the top another video I got on how to adjust the governor. You put it back together and after you adjust it, it wants to surge up and down or lope, anything like that. Try adjusting the governor first. And just follow that video at the top there and it'll help you do that. And you'll just put everything back together backwards the way you took it apart that kind of goes up underneath there a little bit get your screw line up there if it's your old style it would be a little bit different than this that'll tighten up once you get the wing nuts on there like this. the air filter goes on like this 
these pretty tight. This back one is what tightens all this up. And just put this one there and put the wing nuts on the top. Also have another video on how to set up your choke and your throttle linkages here. And there's another one. There's an alternate way to setting up the choke on these. It's actually what I usually do. Instead of the automatic choke, where you have to have full throttle to choke it, I don't like it. If you see this screw right here, this hole right here, I run a screw with a cable clamp in there. I hook the choke cable directly up to the choke linkage on the carburetor. And do away with this arm, the way I got a manual choke. That's how you convert an automatic choke to manual choke if you're like me and don't like the automatic choke. A lot of times you get you're cutting heavy grass, you give it full throttle, and you think you got a little bit more throttle, and you give it full throttle, and you end up choking it out. And uh, that's just an alternate way of doing it. But this is the way they all come factory, automatic choke. But that's up to you how you want to do it. So. Well, guys, I guess that's about it. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching.